Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. You're going to take a look at the European this morning. <clears throat> and, you know, this is one of the forecast problems that I have with regards to having so many different models and model variations to look at. And the problem is you can always find that one or two model variations that are going to support the notion that uh, you might want the, or the result you might want. And, and, and I, I don't think that's really a good way to uh, forecast. Uh, you have to look, you know, you have to have a certain set of parameters that you look. I really like to focus on the operational runs and try to draw my conclusions that way so I don't get biased by anything. And I just want to show you here with respect to the European, which to me uh, has pretty much uh, caved to the idea of the GFS. And as we put it in motion now, this is for Saturday. Uh, you can see right up here there's uh, of weak uh, shortwave trough here and this is so much different from what was being shown days ago where it had a, a, a trough that extended from uh, eastern Canada all the way down and supported a strong cold front so we knew that that was nonsense so this front that comes through now comes through faster uh, on the European uh, as, as fast as it does on the GFS and the bottom line is, and we've been saying this with respect to this split flow, is if you have this northern jet pulling out, you cannot have cold air wedged in in any fashion, okay? And this is what today's model pretty much indicates. Um, in fact, we can barely find, even since all the energy seems to want to now get wrapped up in the Rockies, you can barely find a system that comes out uh, for the early part of the week, it goes out and it's done. Whatever happens on Monday happens in terms of rain, and then it's out of here. And then the ridge pops back up as this trough sharpens out to the west, which means that the next weather system is also going to probably going to go by to our west and uh, going to meet for some rain rain events. You know, it, it's very hard. Uh, you get these model runs and you try to get to some uh, idea of where things are going to go. And you have this, kind of the same setup here on the uh, at the end of next week, where you have another strong system, at least what the European is showing now, another strong system uh, in the plains. Here we have a wrapped up little vortex in uh, eastern Canada with some cold air in the east, but it's not especially cold. Uh, the coldest air is to the north, and if this gets out of the way, which it's likely to do because there's no block, uh, you're going to have uh, another weather system go by to the west. And I, I just want to point out, at least from the standpoint of, of uh, snow lovers and winter lovers, we are at the end of November, the very beginning of December. This is nothing that's unusual. Um, if you remember back to last year, after the couple of cold shots we had in November, December was a pretty quiet month, and it was uh, not until the middle part of January that we saw any changes. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen the same way. It may not happen the same way. Uh, we may wind up being in a subpar winter all the way through. It's very difficult to see um, how uh, things are going to change unless we get a, a few other things to happen. Uh, in the uh, in the atmosphere. So, uh, but the bottom line also is the fact that just because what you see here now is not a verdict of what's going to happen two weeks from now, four weeks from now, or eight weeks from now. So, um, when I see posts saying basically, you know, the winter's over, uh, et cetera, et cetera, it hasn't even really started yet. So, you just kind of need to put these things into perspective. Late November, mid-December snows in the east are not common events they are actually rather rare it's usually after the middle of december that we start to get things going so let's uh, continue this adventure and we'll see how it goes